Welcome back to another video folks. Today in this video I'll be showing you how I painted these tiger tanks for North Africa. There's the Battlefront plastic kits and I'll be showing you the process start to finish including for the first time me actually putting some airbrushing on to video. I have to apologise in advance folks that there are times where the airbrushing went off shot but it's quite hard um, I thought about practice anyway to keep everything on um, uh, on the, the screen because I'm trying to watch the screen and airbrush at the same time but hopefully you get the idea. Um, so I cover the whole process including the, the tools, the weathering, the washing, getting the modulated look and the, the idea is here is, for anyone who's watching this who's not familiar with what I do, this is for wargaming. These are not scale model kits. No, so these are wargaming kits, they're simple. Straightforward, easy construction. You can add more complexity to them should you wish because they are plastic kits. But um, this is all about getting a, a nice attractive kit for your tabletop wargames. Now you can see here I've, I've laid out the colours, I think this is everything. You'll see them all individually as I'm using them, but this is the range of colours that I've used for the hull and all the various other little bits and pieces that go with it. There's a lot going on on a tiger tank, which is handy when you've got something which is basically a sandy kind of colour because it helps focus the eye, brings little details into focus and helps give it the necessary depth and shapes that you need. There are a few enamel products used in this as well, but I'll cover them off when I'm using them. So I'm going to go straight on to the unboxing and then I shall show you the finished product again at the end in a nice little desert setting. So please tune in, stay with it folks. I don't tend to well, I don't do speeded up brushing or airbrushing. I want you guys to see it as it happens. It'll give you a better understanding of the control that you need to move things around, be it a brush or an airbrush. You can actually see it and it might sound a bit strange, but muscle memory is a very important part of painting, like in most physical things, and you have to build that up with experience. Uh, and you can see what I do anyway over the next. Next uh, little while, I'm not sure how long the video is actually going to work out, but hopefully it will be of interest to you all. Hey, welcome to another video folks. Now, I'm going to show you how to paint this little Tiger Heavy Tank Platoon for the Africa Corps, start to finish. Um, and for once I'll actually show you my airbrushing. Um, and uh, hopefully that'll go okay. But we'll start just by having a look at what's in the box. Okay, so first of all we've got decals, which is always good. The standard tank crew, and I think there's two tanks in here, but I think I'm going to put a commander in each one. Um, I think they deserve it, being nice big tigers. And there's our cart. Oh, it's definitely going to be a super tank in mid war. I tank 14, front armour 9, side armour 8. Uh, I can see them rather dominating in any game that they're in. And here's the spruce, so there's two different kinds. Uh, this here has got two sets of scarfs, one damaged, one intact. It's got a wee bucket. You want to have your wee typical bucket hanging off the back end of your tiger, you can do that. There's not a lot of other things other than spare track and a bit of storage, but to be honest, that's probably a kit for a tiger anyway. It's got um, the big storage storage bin in the back of the um, uh, the turret. And this appears to be identical to the late war sprue. So, it's the rest of it. It's different because it's not got any zim in it and the 
wheels have um, rubber tyres but overall it's a nice cast there's some lovely detail on the tracks Nice crisp lines. Uh, That's one thing always to watch out for as well with these boxes. Just be careful because things can pop off the screws. And I'm going to need that because that's open turret for the, the early version. So I'm going to start putting these together. Um, I'll, I'll put one together and then I shall show you another one going together. Um, just so you can see if there are any little snags that you've got to be aware of to get a nice tight fit so I shall come back to you when I have ready to start the assembly okay so thoughts on construction first of all the finished kit is really quite chunky I quite like it it's chunky and strong and Compared to a lot of other Tiger kits that I've made in plastic, I like how it feels. A uh, couple of things. First of all, the turret, I, I drilled out the, the barrel. That's something I would always do, but a, but a big uh, muzzle brake like this, it's probably worthwhile doing it. Give it a bit more of a three dimensional look. I put a bit of track hammer on this side. Oops, excuse me. I'm you need to get in the shot on this side here. This side you can do the same, but I want the vehicle number and also it's very tight between the vision port and the hatch as well. You've got to do a bit of trimming. So I'll see what I decide to do on the second one. Now, there's quite a lot to this kit. There's, there's lots of parts. I mean, here's a partly constructed lower hull. And you can see you've got side panels to go on. You've got the, uh, the front glasses to go on as well. Now that's, you'd think it's going to be quite problematic. And because uh, there's not a lot of gaps, but to be honest, it's, it's really quite neat. You just have to be careful of this plate here, meeting the, the lower front glasses. Make sure that joint goes nice and tight. So make sure you've got some glue along the joint. And then in here, this is a bit more tricky, getting that nice and tight. Uh, this plate will only go back so far before it starts deflecting off here, and this will only go back so far. That's probably the trickiest bit. Everything else went together really quite nicely. This rear plate is a bit awkward. You have to really squeeze it in to the, the bottom sort of bathtub so I just squeezed it in and then I put some glue in around it as opposed to trying to squeeze it in with glue on it because the glue is squirting it everywhere so I'm just relying on this glue here to fuse it so overall just watch the back bit watch your gap here watch your gap here and otherwise it goes together really quite nice and uh, I've still got the, uh, the filter to put onto this but it goes together really quite nice with a really nice chunky solid finish for such a uh, for such a multi-part um, kit. Why the side scuffs? Just make sure you got the glue all the way along. It's a little bit all the way along, and then I just find the locator pins and then just push push the rest in. Leave that a minute. Go back. Do that side again and that side again and you can't go far wrong there. You can use your eye just to make sure it's lined up nice and straight along the bottom edge of the hull too. So finish kits next and then preparing for airbrushing. Right guys I have um, put a shade coat on. I think I should have really put an undercoat of something a bit more solid, like a Tamiya. Um, I've been doing that with my plastic kit so far and I think it would have helped with this. So I took a few more coats than I would have wanted to put on. And I used um, 
this at such a little ASIO 821 German Camel Beige as a base colour. Now, I use a fairly basic double action uh, airbrush, nothing fancy, but it does what I need. Now, you're not going to hear me speaking when I'm using the compressor because it's not working right. I changed the, uh, the moisture trap on it because it was getting a bit of moisture and it wasn't. It didn't really work right. The, the one I put on it was an old one um, and it just didn't seem to seal properly and I put the old one back on, the original one rather, back on and it, it hasn't sealed properly so instead of it just producing the air on demand it's on the go all the time. This is what I use to thin my paints, it's the uh, Vallejo Airbrush Thinner and it's absolutely fantastic. Best thing I've used for Vallejo paint, it's like, it's like water. As far as the consistency of the paint goes, well I'll see what I can show you during the video but it's something you have to learn yourself, it's not so much three, so much of that, three of that, two of that, one of this, four of that, it's whatever needs to be done, for instance paint from this bottle comes out thicker than the paint from this bottle so you really just have to be using your eyes and your experience. So I'm going to be airbrushing these guys with the main, probably the main coat of paint and this is going to be Panzer Aces, Villagio Panzer Aces Highlight Africa Core. Uh, so what I will do at the moment is, now I've just cleaned my airbrush so, I'll prepare the paint. Now then, I'm going to see if I can get this on camera. There's not, if I can tip that the right way, not a hell of a lot thinner in there, you can see it is. It's not a massive amount. Now, I'm going to just pump, oh, excuse me, pump the lever a bit, because I want thinner in the tube going up to the needle prevents any paint going in as I'm mixing it. Now that's not a hell of a lot whoops thinner in there. That's two three four put one more in five. That one more it's just the guesswork element. And I shall give it a stir in here. Let's see if I can, you can see it's quite, quite watery. And the trick is to get something that will stick and it won't, uh, to, the, to the, the surface, it won't splay when it hits the surface, but also um, isn't going to dry on the needle. Now, one more thing that I need to find. These things are your friend when you're doing modulation on tiny little vehicles. For instance, I'm going to want a nice straight line here and a slight tackiness, depending on what, what, where you put it on, a slight tackiness of that glue will, will help it stick. So I'll be going on that basis. So it's about to get noisy. And I'm about to get busy, let's see how it goes. Right, first things first. I'm closing down the aperture. Right, so a bit of a dodgy start because of my compressor. Uh, if I did tear this post-it in a little strip to try and get it small enough to push it in to give me this important straight line that I need to do. And I hope it doesn't blow off. That's why this is coming off in the same I'm 
peel it away, and then you can see that quite distinctive line. Now, I'm going to lighten around the edges of the back of the turret. Hopefully I just get myself into shot. all over it. Right, get this. That means you've got paint drying on your needle and potentially in the nozzle but that's okay. You can just kick any excess paint off like that. Right. And I'm trying to scratch the edge. Hopefully you can hear me over that compressor. And do the same thing in the back of the bin. And the outside edge of the bin. And the back of the bin needs to just a bit more down. There we go. And then along the edges of the turret. And mine's that. I've already done the barrel and it catches along the top of the mat like here. Now I've got to try and catch around the top of the hatch and the turret and the cup of the thing. First stage of the modulation complete. Just want to check the sides actually. I probably want to do a little bit more on the sides. Right. Let's start by just going along the top of the hull. It's going to be tricky what to do on the top of the scarf, so I need to go back to my post. It's what I'm actually going to do is start on this side because the paint's a bit wet around that side. Just one second. It's a handy length for that. Let's hope it doesn't fly off. glasses here. Then come back to this side. coming across where we've got light, dark, light, dark, and that'll be accentuated when the highlight goes on. Now, this is a bit trickier, I'm going to have to try and just do this in sections. Right, I need to. Down a bit. And that's keeping a neat, a neat edge up against the shadow. 
bottom there and then I can just hook it out of There we go and it's gone light to dark all the time, light to dark and then just careful not across the front glasses because you can see very much the low glasses a little bit on the underside and then we can go with these details on the back so let's try and catch the top off those filters protect the covers for the exhaust I don't want to be leaving too much dark though. Don't want the main colour to be just darkness. Now the wheels. Um, I'm going to put a little blast of highlight colour in them. They're going to be messed up. The weathering one to be or another. But this will just give them a little bit more depth. Right now the upper hull, so we've got to go along the edges. That's the top of the exhaust. Just try to catch some of these features and draw them out a bit. Right along the front. Try not to overshoot. Bit on the turrets. Turrets, and hatches even. Right, let's see. That's quite subtle, but the shades in there. We can compare it to that. Hopefully, you can see a difference. Uh, but I'm now ready to go in with the highlight, so I'm going to finish this one. And then come back and do some uh, highlighting, but it really will bring out the uh, the depth. So highlight color. That's Iraqi sand. As you can see, I've had it for a while. It's seen a lot of use. So let me see if I can try and get it into the light. Not very much went in there at all, that was really just about two big or three medium sized drops. And then, whoops, get this in, try and get this in a shot. Whoops, this bottle's nearly finished. Isn't half nearly finished? Maybe too much. It's not supposed to come out like that. Let's give it a mix. Now then, how's that looking? It's looking a little on a thick side, but that might be okay. I might be okay because I need a lot of control for this stage, so let's give it a go. Right. So same process as before. I need to have this sharp, sharply defined line. Go. Now you can see. Oops, I'm not even off camera, but not yet. Not yet. You see a really nicely defined line. Right, let's try and make sure I'm on camera. And catch the veggies. The light's quite 
be a little bit too strong there, folks, but... drying on the needle. See if I can get that into the focus you can see that. I'm taking it out of the light unfortunately. Uh, no, sorry, but there's paint drying on the needle because it is a little thick. I'm happy enough with that just now though because it's given me a level of control to help these thinner lines uh, thinner areas now the hatch so we get the highlight on the hatch there right same process again for I'll start off by masking this area here. Cables that are on it, it's hard to get it to stick. And we don't want it flying off. I don't want that highlight going into the shade. Sometimes, if you've got to paint too thick, you've got to give it a bit of a, a blast out. Now we've got this back in action. I'm going to keep the same shot here, sorry folks. Right, try and get that on the side. Too thick and in there. I've been worn out by that. I have to keep cleaning the music. Yeah, I didn't bother with the masking there, I just went straight to the other one. Definitely a bit too thick, and I might get a bit unworkable. If I 
that's got unworkable. You better just to write it off. And start all over again. Right, I'll try to turn the light off here. Yeah, it's a bit more contrast visible there. So that's got the highlight, no highlight. So I'm going to crack on and finish this one. And that'll be the modulation done. So that's the modulation air brushed on. It's quite stark at the moment. There's a Fairly obvious transitions between the dark and the darkest and the lightest areas. We want that effect to a degree, but we don't want it to be too strong. Now, there's various things that you can do next when you're dealing with modulation. Most of them you would do on large scale kits, so you have to be careful when you're dealing with small scale kits because you might actually end up darkening the whole thing down too much. I keep it to very simple stages. What I'm going to do next is do some fading which means I'm going to take light and draw it down across panels um, in a streaky, faded way. After that, I'll put a coat of gloss varnish over it. I won't add any filters to unify the surface because the gloss varnish and the pin wash will do that anyway. That's one less stage for you to do and one less stage where you're likely to darken things down. And then there'll be a bit of chipping and such like added as well, which really helps. It helps to find all the panels and such like. So I'm going to start though with the fading here. 
I'm just trying to prepare my palette so you can get an idea of the paint. I'm using the Iraqi sand again as my highlight colour. I'm using that for the um, fading. Now, that's the kind of consistency of the paint. See, it's not flowing away, but it is really quite runny. Right. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, I'm going to take that paint and draw along this highlighted edge. So I tidy it up a bit. Right, now that's had a little moment to dry. So I'm just drawing it down. Trying to avoid being too uniform. Softening that bottom edge. This is the kind of stage that normally gets completed using enamels or oil paints because you've got a much greater control. But I'm quite happy to do this with enamel uh, with acrylics because it keeps it a nice and simple process with quick drying times. Quick drying times are obviously a bit of a challenge though because you've got to get to work. You can draw up as well as down. Right. This is had a minute to dry, so going in, I'm going to use thin my paint a little touch more and try and soften this. Transition once again. Try and pick up some of the original feed marks. Soften around the edges of the turret. Now 
the side there's got a nice soft transition but it needs just a bit more top to bottom fading just to help unify the surface pick out these areas see the paint's really quite wet that's going on here Soften this edge again because I went on a little bit too, a little bit too hard. Keep drawing it down. Work on the side a bit. There you go, there's some fade, and that's gone a little bit stronger than I would have liked, but the shade and the chipping will help tone it down a bit. The side, hopefully that's coming across okay. The side's a lot more subtle. And it's probably ideal somewhere in between the two. And then I can keep catching these upper surfaces. You see the paint's gone on quite soft quite wet. I'm not trying to paint it on with thick paint, sort of straight at the bottle, it's really quite thin. And that'll help keep the transition between the outside edges and the main body of the panels nice and soft. So I'm going to do this over the whole surface of the tank it takes quite a while especially when you've got a tank with so many flat surfaces but I shall let you see what it looks like when I'm finished right that's the fading finished Hopefully this is coming across okay on the camera. So it softens the modulation to a degree. I've done it a little bit strong on the 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 slope of the turret there. But don't forget it's, it's going to get softened further with washes and even the chipping will help soften it down. Here's the hull. And then I've worked on certain features to help bring them out. Hatches and extractor fans and things on the engine deck. All with really quite soft, wet paint. There's even a bit of modulation front to back on these parts of the, the engine deck, a little bit towards that front corner there on the hull and then on the rear as well. And it basically helps unify the surface, makes it a bit more interesting, a bit more depth. So now this guy is ready for a, um, a coat of varnish and a pin wash before I move on to any chipping. I'm not going to chip these as much as I have done for other 
desert vehicles that I've done for the Germans because it's relatively new to theatre when it looking a bit beat up but nothing too extreme Right, so I shall come back when I'm ready to do the uh, pin wash. <laughs> 